This is Agnes Shanley, editor of PharmaManufacturing.com. I'm here at Interfex 2011 in New York City, and uh, with me is Ewart Richardson, who is a technical director at uh, DEC Group. Um, uh, Ewart, you have a number of new jet mill, uh, uh, jet mill technologies on display here, um, but you know, I, I just wondered if you could discuss some of the uh, the issues that are affecting the industry right now. You know, with the variability of product uh, insufficient um, bioavailability that you know are impacting the patients um, how uh, important is particle size distribution and its control to uh, ensuring bioavailability and what are some of the issues uh, involved with uh, sticky uh, materials in um, respiratory uh, therapies for example the, the biggest battle we see is actually in in health products for the respiratory element of the body we're looking in those issues to have a very very fine particle size distribution we're looking to keep the curve as small as we possibly can do mainly because if the curve is too small and the particles are too small you breathe them back out if they're too large then obviously they're not getting to the action site so you're generally looking around the one to two micron particle size that's the ideal size the current technology cannot deal with some of the new products that are coming along, particularly the very, very sticky products. They tend to adhere to some of the systems. So what we've tried to develop is a specific micronizer that can deal with those very, very sticky products. And that's what we've done here by some of the technology we've built. And uh, how does it work? Essentially, we're putting very, very high gas flow into the feed nozzles and into the micronizer itself. By doing that, we actually are putting more energy into the product. That's the biggest issue with some of the existing micronizers. They don't put enough energy into the product. By distributing the energy correctly, hopefully correctly, we get a better impact on the product and therefore we can control the particle size a lot better. Also, the extra energy, hopefully, removes adherence of the product into the micronizer itself. And so what types of level of control can you achieve typically? We try and aim to keep that curve literally within one or two microns around the sort of one to 1.5 micron particle size. So we try and chop the tail off. On standard mills you'll quite often see a tail that moves out to 10 microns. We try and bring that into less than five microns so the tighter we get it, the more bioavailability, the better product. And uh, you used some uh, pretty um, novel technology to design this with computational fluid dynamics. Can you discuss what you learned in that whole process? What we've learned by part of that process essentially is that when you look at a current micronizer, and it's not just our micronizer, any micronizer, most of the energy would appear to be around the outside. You would think that would be very different, but it's not. So what we tried to do by the design we put together here is design the system so the energy is spread. So we actually get a longer residence time in the micronizer. So the particle is in there longer. If it's in there longer, it'll break down better and we'll get a better particle size distribution around the core elements we need to get to. Do you envision a time when uh, this equipment would be uh, used routinely with uh, uh, PAT types of systems in line? Absolutely. Uh, I think the battle now really is finding PAT technology that works accurately enough at this very, very small level. We've tried it. We haven't yet succeeded, but I think the technology is now coming. Well, thank you so much. Okay.